mixed up, um, it gets a little bit different, so a little bit away from the traditional this is what I do to run kind of assessment uh, and concentrate a little bit more on the head. So the first one is mental strength. Um, so your, your head controls the legs, that's a good way of thinking about it for running. Uh, it also controls if you decide to go out running in the rain, it makes you finish training sessions, um, it keeps efforts consistent if you're doing interval efforts uh, and allows you to um, uh, finish races strong. Um, it also keeps you away from things like the cookie jar and the chip shop um, if you're committed to doing that. Personally, I'm a massive fan of cookie jars and chip shops and I just run further to make sure that I feel that I've, uh, I've earned those things. Um, but each to their own. So that mental strength is think about the races, think about your races you've had and think about the ones that you've finished. And for most of us, um, that's going to be a real strong position to be in. If you don't think it is and you think it's something that you could do with developing, then mark it down and it's something we can then come back to and, and give you some tips on how we can help with that. Um, Self-motivation up next, so this is around, if you've picked your right running goal and ambition, uh, how, what would it mean to achieve your goal? How important is it to you to, in order to do that? And, and how would it feel when you get there? Um, think about your history of running and ambitions, so if you've uh, a long history of abandoning goals, um, not completing training plans, X, Y and Z, no matter what the reason, and, and obviously there's always going to be sometimes some deep-rooted personal reasons for that or life situations, but you've always kind of got to go, well, actually, if that was someone else, maybe they could have done that, or maybe not, um, but be really honest with yourself in regards to self-motivation and have you had a history of being able to stick to a training plan, go and do a running race, if you're just feeling a bit off, is it the first thing to kind of get cancelled and, and, and put to one side? Um, and that way we can be aware of it and we can look at how we build it in. It's not necessarily about forcing you to do something, it's about building in buffers to know that you're probably going to not want to go out when it's raining. So actually how do we build that into an actual plan rather than just forcing yourself to go out? Or just put a hat on and get out there is the other option. Okay, uh, staying in the kind of emotional zone, uh, we're talking around the support network massively important for anyone committing to a running goal or to a training aim. And this is about your, who's got your back, so your friends, your family, uh, the people at the running club, you know, have you spoke to your family around your running goals and ambitions? Because it really helps to have them on side when it comes to balancing kind of work, life and leisure time and family time and training. Um, and have you got access to things like good advice, you know, if you don't know what pace you should be doing your runs at and you haven't got anyone to ask, then you probably should mark your support network down or the next time you know, go and join a run club. There's loads of great friendly ones out there to join and there's a raft of advice in that. Um, and take your collection of advice, take it away and kind of make your own conclusions for what you get because everyone's going to have a different opinion. 